Hey Flastube, how you guys doing? It's Lori here, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. We talk about cross stitching on this channel. It's fun. Grab a drink, relax, because today we're doing a fabric tour. So I am filming during the day, which I usually don't. I usually film at night. So because I'm filming during the day, there may be some random weird noises in the background. Except, you know, example, my bird. My dog is up and about a little bit more. My kids up, the neighbors are up, the neighbor kids, like, it's a nice day out. It actually hit 70 today. It's acting like springtime. <laughs> so it's tank top mode activated. Um, so there might be some random noises in the background. I'm going to try to keep it minimal, but there's only so much I can do about it. But I needed some natural light because there's a window here behind y'all. And because the colors of fabrics are really hard to come true on camera, I feel like it helps a little bit with natural lighting, but it's still like, I'll let you know if something's looking too squirrely or not. But the way this video is going to go is basically I'm just going to parade all of my fabric collection for you guys. Uh, if you haven't been watching my channel already, uh, most of my fabric, actually probably 98% of it is brightly colored over dyed fabrics <laughs> because I like color. <laughs> um, I do have a few random like non-colored fabrics. Um, also probably 75% of it is opalescent. <laughs> so I'll go over, I've grouped them by designer basically. I was going to organize them by colors, but that just got too tricky because some of them are a mix of several colors that and I've noticed when I go shopping for like fabrics a lot of times I have a tendency to buy like a color I already have so it helps me if I keep them organized by designer that way if I'm like scrolling and I'm like ooh, I like that color I'm like wait a minute go check yeah I've got it already so that helps me that way which has been good for this organization process for me because I've gone through all of my fabrics and I've surged the raw edges with the beast, my surging machine. <laughs> I have used my handy dandy little tag machine and I have tagged everything. So there's no more plastic bags. I still haven't come across how I'm gonna store them all though. But anyways, let's get to the fabrics because that's what y'all are here for. So let's start out with one that's really quick because I only have one fabric by this company. And sadly, I was looking at the company because I'm like, ooh, I might like to get more of this in an opalescent, but it looks like they're not shipping right now, at least for fabrics, probably due to the, the pandemic. But this is from the Crafty Kitten. It's a UK company, and this is called Enchanting Aurora. And I do have kind of something to help the colors show up a little bit here. Yeah. So this looks a little, I mean, it is pretty pastel, but it's looking a little more pastel than it should. But lots of kind of soft blues, purples, kind of minty greens. Wouldn't this be lovely in an opalescent? I think that'd be nice. This would be good for like, oh, like the Snow Queen. It'd be good for a mermaid. It'd be good for a fairy. Uh, fairy Moon would look good on this. Like there's a lot of things this would look good on. So yeah, I'm like, this would be nice to have in an opalescent. And sometimes I want to go through and this is one thing I'm considering. I hate these square wrinkles. So I'm considering going through ironing all my fabrics and setting up kind of like a hanger system to where I can hang them all. You know, maybe they have like a slight fold down the middle, you know, but it won't be at least a hard crease. I'm considering that. I do have a wall space here that I could use that for. So I'm knocking that idea around because I don't like square wrinkles. I also tend to prefer linen and even weave. Pretty much um, basically all of this is linen and even weave. I don't have any random bits of Ada, except for I have it sequestered into basically a purgatory where I intend to give it away at some point. <laughs> so let's see what we got here. Okay, this is another overseas company. This is XJU Designs. And I will say I do have more fabric from this dyer, but I'm not going through all of my kitted up projects that have fabric sequestered in there for that project. Some of it is, yes, this piece is what this project is being stitched on. Other times it's like, eh, I'm going between these two or three. So this isn't absolutely all of my fabrics for every designer, but you know, you'll get the idea here. But this is XJU Designs. She has an Etsy shop. She's from, oh gosh, this is a uh, Witch's Brew. Isn't that nice? I like it. Make you think where she's from though. Oh, Hungary, I think. I could be wrong. I'll, I'll double check that. I'm also going to link all these designers underneath, you know, so you guys can check them out if you want. This is a lovely purple with all these little splooshy splashes, which is brew. I wish she would do more opalescents. You don't see them very often. I'm sure I could probably message her and ask her to do these colors in opalescent. I mean, I don't want to speak for her, but 
I also haven't tried that, so maybe I should. I will say these fabrics do have, at least these two, have a fairly strong vinegar smell to them. Not like knock you over or, you know, I'm having a Caesar salad moment or anything like that, but it's detectable. <laughs> this is another color I have. This is Elixir. Isn't that cool? I love, I love how just kind of splooshy, mildewy, sick looking this piece is. I like it. It's very cool. So um, I bought this piece for um, Leshy of the Woods, one of the Witchy Stitchers designs. And I liked it so much I wanted another. <laughs> I would also take one in an opalescent. So, but this had popped up and I knew I wanted Witch's Brew. She basically does like batches and then she puts up the pieces that she has. So it's not like dye to order, it's already dyed. So you, as American stitchers, we do have to wait for it to ship overseas, but the stuff is dyed and ready to go. So you're not gonna be waiting months and months and months. So um, yeah, if I, when you see pit colors that you like of hers and it's not in stock, you have to wait for her to like do it again. Though again, I haven't asked, you know, like, Hey, will you do this? She might, but I haven't asked yet. So let's see here. Okay, let's do the next little pile. I'm kind of trying to start with the companies that I have little, little quantities of. So this is um, Fortnite Fabrics. Now, like I said, they had a vinegary smell. These guys, they're fabrics. I don't know what it is, but there's, there's some, I don't know, it just, it's not like a knock you over smell or perfumey or anything, but there's like when you walk into someone's kitchen and it's been freshly cleaned, that fresh kind of lemony, fresh smell. I don't know, like they just smell so clean. <laughs> I'm a fabric sniffer. You guys caught me. <laughs> but anyways, I joined their Fabric of the Month Club. What's it called right now? Um, the Opalescent one, of course. This is Caring Nebula. I think this is this current month's, and this is the Opalescent 32 Count Linen. These are the two pieces that are still in the crinkly fabric. Sorry if you don't like crinkle noises. I swear this is the only piece that you're gonna have to hear this on because I just got this a couple days ago. So, but this is their fabric of the month. They have a opalescent one, and here's what this one looks like. Not sure that I have much ideas for this one. I don't tend to use a lot of pink, but <sighs> smells like <laughs> smells like a freshly cleaned kitchen. I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> um, so what I've been doing though is I've been taking my tag machine. Theirs come with a tag that's loose. So with my little tag attacher, I just shoot it on there basically. And I'm liking that. I bought it off Amazon. Um, what did I look for? Um, tag attacher, I don't know, something like that. Um, I'll link it down below too if you guys wanted to get one. So there's that. And then I've got this piece. I think this was off one of their auctions. They have a Facebook group and an Instagram and they have like weekly auctions where they'll have really small like uh, eighth, eighth of a yard cuts and um, or fat eighth, I guess you'd say. And they have all these random colors some of them you can tell are coming from their fabric of the month you know like for this month it was like lots of green so but they have like these little auctions and you can like bid on them and win them so i think that's where i got this one from so this fabric doesn't have a color name but i like it and this is an opalescent i think it's real nice i'm gonna try not to sniff each and every one of these pieces it is hard to resist this piece makes me giggle a little bit because um, they'll do a Facebook Live where they'll auction off some fabric and they were talking about the fabrics that were this color being very flesh toned and they like to have you guys name the fabric and during that live stream I suggested they name this one Silent Lamb just because it was skin colored. <laughs> so I like to call this one Silent Lamb. I guess you could also name it Hello Clarice. That would work just as well too. It's kind of a peachy color though. like. Not so much skin, more kind of like a peach. So there's that. And then this is a, looks like a rare even weave for me. 28 count even weave, non-opalescent. It's kind of a um, 
gray. I mean, it looks white on camera, but it's got lots of kind of a gray purple cast to it. But yeah, I don't even think the white backdrop is going to help. It is a very subtle color, but it's a small piece. I'll probably use it for like ornaments. Another piece of the green. It's kind of the same as the last one, but it was opalescent and I cannot restrain myself when it comes to an opalescent. This one I really like. This is a 32 count linen. Again, this was a eighth of a yard from an auction. It's purple. Love me some purple. So that's pretty. This one, ooh, I really like this one because it's a nice lavender purple. This is 32 count linen. I would say probably my favorite is 32 count linen, but because I like beads so much, I tend to get 28 count linen just a little bit more. I prefer linen to even weave just because I like the looseness of it, like my hands. I have to keep my hands happy. <laughs> and I like the looseness of a linen. Even weaves are a little bit thick, but I will say I do think my stitching looks a little bit better on even weaves. That and when it comes to over dyes, they tend to, the dye takes a little bit lighter on even weaves and I kind of like a stronger color, like how it shows up on the linens. And here's a more delicate violet color. This kind of looks like one of their fabrics of the month too, which this is, if you saw, wasn't the last video or the one before it where I was showing a picture where I was thinking of using it on Dragon Ride, Teresa Wensler's Dragon Ride. And it was like this color, but it was an opalescent. But purple, yes. You will see, I have a hard time resisting purple and aqua colored fabrics. Purple is my favorite color, aqua, Probably second favorite color and I stitch a lot of mermaids. So I feel like I need multiple waterways <laughs> for that. So this is my Fortnite fabric. I don't have a lot of them. They tend to do a lot of uh, solid colors and I tend to like more mixy colors for the most part, but I've, I'm kind of lacking in solid colors in my collection. So I'm trying to dabble in that a little bit more. Okay, this pile here makes me kind of squint my eyes a little bit because I'm like I swear I have more of this and I do but it's I have it kitted up in a lot of things so this is Ships Manor I really like Ships Manor so this piece is Whisper this is oh I love this piece I have an idea for what I might use it on I'm kind of holding out maybe reordering it in, a, in an opalescent because it's for a mermaid so look how vivid it's a very vivid aqua with like some hits of maybe some limey green very Caribbean blue kind of colored, which I will say this company's website, the pictures they have on there don't really do the fabric justice because look how vivid this is. It looks very dull on the website and so does this next color, which this next color is the first color I got from them and I ordered it off eBay because that picture looked more vivid like it was. So when I went to their website, I thought, wow, that color really doesn't look that sharp, you know, and I think it's just the pictures suck. So. That's the biggest problem with buying over dyed fabrics is you never really know what you're gonna get. Cause like you might have a piece and then you'll get another piece and they're a little bit off. And then it might look different on the website when you're looking at the pictures. So it's frustrating. The ideal thing is to just have a store where you can buy it, you know, and see it for yourself. But you know, we don't all have that luxury. So what I tend to do is to buy small pieces from companies just to kind of get a taste of what the colors are. Then when I'm sorting up a piece, I can do some floss tossing and kind of have a more clear idea of, oh, this is what this color might look like. But keeping in mind that when I order a new one, it might be a little off. So anyways, this is the first color I saw from Ships Manor and I am stitching Heiress of Atlantis by Bella Filipina on it. It is bliss and it's a gorgeous blue and purple. Not unlike the very first piece I showed you from Crafty Kitten. But this one's a, it's a little more vivid. Crafty Kittens was a little more pastel -y. This one's a little bit juicier. So yeah, this one's definitely washing out too. It's a lot brighter looking in person. But this piece is an opalescent and is it a 32 count? Yeah, this is a 32 count linen. I'm always torn when I'm ordering unknown colors like pieces that I don't have like this is what I'm stitching it on because I prefer 32 count linen but I know I like stitching with beads a lot so really to be safe I should order the 28 count linen but I just can't help myself but I like this color enough that I think I bought yeah I bought a couple pieces of it this is a non-opalescent 32 count this was back when I was I don't know trying to just expand 
my fabric collection because this was when I just came back into stitching. I think I showed this haul in like an earlier video. But I really like Ships Manor fabrics. And I will say on their website, it looks like a lot of their fabrics you can't order in opalescent. But I'm an opalescent whore, so I messaged them, hey, can I get this color in opalescent? He says, yeah, sure. Just make an order and then send me an email telling me which ones you want in opalescent. And we'll make it for you. So I was like, okay, cool. And they ship pretty fast. Like even during the pandemic shutdown, I was getting them in like four weeks or something like that. So they were pretty fast. So this is the 28 count uh, linen non-opalescent same color bliss i love it i was like i'll have i'll take one in, in each size basically <laughs> so yeah because i feel like i can always use it oh gosh Th now this one's showing up a lot better yeah i love that organic blending of colors and one thing i really like let's see if i can find a spot um one kind of feature about over dyed fabrics that makes my toes wiggle is when like Okay, when like the color kind of creeps through the other color and it just, I don't know, it makes it look real organic, you know, and cool. Modeling, I guess you would call it. So this looks like this is all I have from Ships Manor, but I have so much more. I have Halloween Mummy, which is a really cool color for a Victoria Sampler um, Halloween, one of the Halloween designs. I have Heiress of Atlantis on a piece for this. I think I have a few other pieces stored away for other mermaids. I want to get another piece of this for a specific mermaid, but I did do the floss toss on this one. And I'm like, you know, if I order a piece and it's like, you know, cause that happens sometimes you're like, Ooh, I like this piece. I'm going to order another one. And it's not quite what you were envisioning, you know? So that's just one of the sucky things about liking over dyed fabrics. Okay. Who's next? Looks like fiberlicious, yummy fibers. I have a love-hate relationship with them because their colors are very bold, but sometimes they're a little much. <laughs> so I do have, I think, more than this. Um, I've also ordered a, a, made another order recently. I'll be getting some more fabric in because digging through all this fabric kind of made me realize like, ooh, I want more of this, ooh, I want more of this. So it's kind of a bad thing, but it's also good that I'm organizing it a little. I don't know. So, but this is the Siren Depths. All of these are opalescent. This, I really love this piece. It's real cool. I'll show you here. This is one of their painted fabrics. So by painted, I mean it's got like a pattern. So it kind of looks like deep water. Had a couple ideas for this. I was thinking of doing maybe Triton by Bella Filipina on this. Hmm. I would love for them to make some kind of a shark themed mermaid because I think something sharky would look just awesome on this because it just, I don't know, kind of screams jaws to me a little bit. But yeah, I like the painted fabrics that they have. They're ombre fabrics. I love their ombre lines. And from what I've seen so far, it seems like for their ombres, most of those colors that you see on the screen are pretty spot on. But there's a couple colors that I'm like... You know, like this next one I'll show you here. Hang on. These ones weren't in plastic envelopes. They come with these little band thingies. So I just kind of, I don't know, just leave it on there. Like, unless I hang everything, then I'll probably cut this part out and attach it with my tag gun. So this one is Neverland. I bought this piece because it was the recommended fabric for uh, Maiden of Tubataha. And on that picture, it looks like it is mostly blue with like hits of green and some warmer colors but instead of like green it's got more brown kind of spots and i just wasn't digging the brown you know it just was kind of falling flat for me and i just didn't think it looked as cool i mean it's still cool i can still do something with this for sure but like comparing it to the picture that was behind the bella filipina design i was like eh that and I ended up having a piece of Hecate that I was like, oh yeah, this is perfect for it. So I ended up going with that, but this is Neverland. And the next piece I'm gonna show you is also a painted fabric. This one's really cool. This one's actually legit got some hand painting on it. This is Beyond the Clouds. 
and this was one of those that I'm like, you know, I don't have a specific design that I want that for, but I want that. So here we go. Isn't that cool? I do have a couple ideas for this. They're mostly mermaid related. <laughs> so, you know, I think it'll work even though it's like clouds, you know, up in the sky or whatever. I think it'll still work. I do think Mirabila's uh, Ren, no, it's the mermaid that reminds me of Aphrodite because like she's coming out of a clamshell. Gosh, there's so many mermaids. It's hard to keep track of them all. And you guys know I'm sucky with names. So, but this one's got like clouds and stars painted on it. But I love the ombre effect. I think they have a piece called Breaking Dawn that is just like this, but without like the clouds. And I will say, I kind of wish I had gotten the piece without the clouds because I don't know if you can see. But, you know, there's, like, paint on there, so I just think it's probably going to be a pain in the butt, like, stitching through that. Though, to be fair, you probably aren't really going to be stitching all the way that far out to the end, you know, for finishing purposes. Because most of the painting's not in the middle part, where, obviously, the stitching's probably going to be. But, you know, it's just a minor gripe looking at it, thinking, oh, that's probably going to suck. <laughs> so, but I, I kind of wish I had just gotten the ombre piece. I think it's called Breaking Dawn. I'm not sure, though. But yeah, their ombre fabrics are super fun. So I always try to fold because looking at this, it looks like it's just a piece of pink. Like I try to fold it in a way where you can see like the color play a little better. Like, well, I guess I just didn't do a good job. Ugh, I gotta do something about it. <sighs> I'm gonna have a pain in the butt going through all these fabrics and trying to like not wrinkle them all up or make them even worse, but I'll have to go through them again. Oh, this piece I love. This is called Teal I Come Home. And I have a couple ideas for this, but at the end, I think I'm gonna need more because I really like it. So it's an ombre, dark at the bottom, light in the middle, lighter at the top. Oh, and it's this yummy teal color. Oh, doesn't it, I think the, um, the pair of mermaids, the, the original like first pair of mermaids that Mirabila came out, they got green tails and they're swimming up. I think they would look really good on this. I think Twisted Mermaids might look really cool on here too. Oh, I think that was a missed opportunity to call them Twisted Sisters. <laughs> oh, look how juicy that color, like it's just, mm. this is just a, a mouth-watering teal color. I love it. So I want some more of that. They also have a purple that I would really like to get. Just because, why not? So it is kind of similar to Under the Sea Fabrics Ursula, I think, but I don't care. I still like it. Okay, so that's all that I have from Fiber Licious Yummy Fibers, aside from what I've got sorted away in the stash, and I've got more of it on order. I ordered from three companies <laughs> right now, so those are on the way. All right, let's see here. Hmm, keep it small, because I'm looking at Under the Sea Fabrics and Picture This Plus, and those piles are big. Okay, Fabrics by Stephanie's pretty big, too got some out of order too Ugh. okay well let me just pull out this solo here this is a solo I've had since forever from silk weavers very small piece but isn't it cool I'm pretty sure it's 32 count it's teeny tiny but isn't it cool now this is one that like I almost hate to stitch on it because it's so pretty you know and wherever you stitch you're gonna cover up something cool and whenever I'm stitching on fabric like this, I'm like, oh, I'm covering the cool spot. <laughs> you know? So I don't know what I will stitch on this, but I've had it since forever. And I've got it flat like this because it was folded up for a very long time. And I've had to iron it a couple times. And then if you cannot tell, the wrinkles are still not out. You can tell it was like one of those fold tri-folds. The wrinkles are still not out of it. So I'm kind of keeping this flat just because I'm tired of ironing the thing. <laughs> So there's that. Um, and that's a random silk weaver. I've got more silk weaver. I think I got a couple fabrics by Stephanie out of order. Yeah, let's just move those out of the way. All right. Here's another silk weaver fabric. Or wait, no, this is this is fabric by Stephanie. Oh gosh, things are out of order. Pardon me for a minute while I okay, here we go. There's where they are. So another Silk Weaver. Um, I don't order from Silk Weaver so much anymore because their customer service sucks right now. From what I heard, their ownership has changed hands. And back in the day, you know, like before I had my stitching hiatus 10 years ago, they were my go-to. And you could order from them and get stuff like in a month, two months even. You could 
custom order something like they would custom cut things i have a couple pieces for my chatelaines that have been custom cut because chatelaines are pretty big like a lot of times i need a 30 by 30 piece of fabric so that means i either need to buy a full yard and that's expensive so it was super cool that they could let me order some of their over dyed fabrics in a custom cut and they'd even serge all the edges and everything so you know it was saving me money a lot of places now will not sell custom cuts you know because it's a cost to them you know for the fabric that they end up having to cut off i think a lot of places like to dye a full yard then cut it in half and then cut that in half i think that's how they prefer to do it just because it you know doesn't waste any fabric for them but man sadly silk weavers kind of gone down like you can still order from them but if like you're like where's my order and you message them do not expect to get a response you'll probably eventually get your fabric but the last few times i've ordered from them when i do get the fabric i'm like eh, that didn't really go the way i planned for it to and i would say these two fit that description as well because this is a custom cut what is it custom yeah i think it is this is a custom cut 28 count cashel rainbow sparkle but it's not so rainbowy like there is one spot that's good like right here that spot's nice and rainbowy but the rest of it like as you can see like it's very pale i mean it is being washed out a little bit by the lighting but not much <laughs> like it's very subtle and i think i bought this with intention of stitching um the Caribbean mandala on it but like that's the most colorful spot right there and it's near the edge which I guess is good but just wasn't what I was expecting I was expecting more wide range of colors too like you can see blue and yellow green pink kind of Easter colors but I don't know I just thought it was gonna look a little bit more bright I guess so and it's opalescent so it still sits in stash because I've pulled something that I like better <laughs> for that design. And then this is a piece of Rainforest. I think this is a full yard. And this is what I ordered for Rainforest Lace Mandala. And this is called Rainforest. And it was supposed to be kind of mostly green with splotches of other color but as you can see like you can barely see the other colors I mean it is again getting washed out but it's mostly green and you can see a little bit of blue a little bit of yellow ish but super subtle you know and this kind of when you back in the day when you got over dyes it was super subtle like this you know it wasn't the wild crazy mixing of colors that we have nowadays so I feel like when it comes to over dyes, Silk Weaver kind of does them more the old fashioned way. So I'm not trying to make it like a diss track, you know, of any companies or anything like that, but just have not had the best customer service from Silk Weaver in a while. So basically I don't even order from them anymore, which is sad. They used to be my go-to. So I think these three are the only ones I have from Silk Weaver. Now we're starting to get into the bigger pile, so this is gonna be fun. Let's do Fabrics by Stephanie, just cause I'm staring at it. Okay, so I got a big chunk of it right here at this. <laughs> so I needed some fabric for uh, Chatelaine's um, Deep Sea Mandala, the coral reef themed mandala. So of course I had to do ocean colors. So, but Fabrics by Stephanie doesn't do like custom cuts and I need a big piece. I think it was like over 30 something per edge. So I had to order a full yard and this is her Ocean's Tide. Very vivid colors, mostly like a dark kind of electric blue and some turquoises. I liked it, but then I had another piece that I just ended up liking a little better. And that might've been a silk weaver, but yeah very big piece of fabric like it was a full 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 yard and it basically all looks like this i don't think i need to open the entire thing for you because the color is pretty consistent throughout i will say fabrics by stephanie is now one of my favorite companies her colors are fun uh she ships pretty quickly 
She's very communicative, if that's a word. <laughs> uh, I remember one of the last orders I did that I had some big fabrics in it. I think like my full, no, it was the one before my full yard for Rainforest Lace. But like she even like called me, you know, to let me know, hey, fabric delays are nigh, you know, which we all kind of had been hearing about. But she actually called me, you know, left me a voicemail, letting me know like, hey, I'm still working on it. You know, so I appreciated that, you know, so she's super cool. I like her stuff. She's got a wide variety, you know, which I really like. So um, her stuff too, like there is some variance in the colors, but there you can, you can see how they're sisters, but maybe not twins, <laughs> you know, when you order two pieces of the same color. Um, Cause this next piece I got is Banshee. This is the same fabric that I am stitching the Queen Mermaid on by Mirabilia. And the piece I have is very, soft aqua purple and little bits of brown this piece though has definitely got more um browns in it so like you can see that the same colors are being used but definitely this doesn't make me think mermaid just because the aquas are a little bit less prominent in this piece but it is still cool this is banshee if i didn't say that already by fabrics by stephanie another opalescent piece very vintagey colors i would say isn't that cool looking yeah this might be cool for like Poison Garden or something. I'm actually shopping for the perfect fabric for Poison Garden right now. I mean, Poison Garden would look fabulous on white, but I don't want to stitch it on white. <laughs> I just don't like, that's boring to me. I don't care if you do. It, this is this is my preference. So I like stitching things on fun colors. So yeah, this is Banshee. And then I've got, and I have a lot of pieces kitted up for Fabrics by Stephanie, so I don't know that I have a huge pile in front of me because a lot of it ended up going to design. I'm stitching a lot of things on Fabrics by Stephanie. So this piece is called Stardust, and I really love this color. It's fun. It's um, hmm, primarily greens and yellows, but it's got like some melon. And I think this type color is what I have for the Caribbean Mandala right now, stashed away. Still not 100% decided though, but I think it is a good choice for it. So this one's got a lot of color variation, very pastels, kind of like what I was expecting the um, rainbow thing to look, though I guess I'd want like more warm colors in this and make it more rainbowy. But again, this is Stardust. And I think it looks fairly true to what the the website shows. So, but yeah, I like I like the stardust. I have a tendency when I really like a color and there's a fun mix to it, I almost kind of like getting more of it. And I kind of don't mind when it's a little different because when I frame things, I don't want it to all look the same. Like that's one thing I hated back in the day when you would frame things on the wall, like your wall is white. And if you stitched a mermaid on white and there's three of them, it just looks boring. Whereas if you stitch them all on a different fabric, you know, it kind of makes them look like different, you know, seas that they're coming from. Um, this is an interesting piece. It's actually chopped to hell, but I surged it so that it's um, kind of straight. Actually, no, I didn't surge it. Oh my God, I should do that. Okay, this is Tint Angel. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how it's spelled. Tint Angel? Tint Tint Tintagel? I don't know. It's um, olive greens, purples. It's kind of a um, like meadow type colors. Very kind of vintagey, distressed kind of colors. The piece that's missing is what I cut out to stitch Teresa Wensler's Wisdom Dragon from the Dragon Trilogy uh, sampler. Not sampler, but it's a design that three designers did a dragon and I'm only stitching the Teresa Wensler one. But yeah, it's a cool color. I think Gaia would probably look cool on it, especially with her yellow dress. It would really pop. Okay, I find it hard to believe that that's all my fabrics by Stephanie. That would be fair, they are big pieces, and I am stitching on a lot of her stuff, so there's that. Um, this one is a one and done, and I think I got this on a D stash, and I've had it like since before, like my hiatus. This is 
from Stab and Stash, and this is called Island Spring. I am not sure if they're still making fabrics, but here we go. So this one's an over dye and it's pretty solid. Like there's not like much modeling on it. And it's an opalescent. I think I bought it from like another stitcher was de-stashing or something like that. And I was gonna stitch a mermaid on it or something, but, and I do like it, it's a very vivid color, but I kind of miss the modeling. Cause I like that when you stitch a mermaid on that, cause obviously I stitch a lot of mermaids. I feel like the modeling kind of lets you know that it's water. It's not just like blue. I like when there's some texture going on in the background. I'm kind of weird like that. But yeah, this this is by Stab and Stash. I should check them out, see if they still got more fabrics because it's always fun checking out new places. But I've just had this for a while, so I don't know what I'm gonna stitch on it. I do have some little shark designs that would be good for that. Then I could chop this up and because, you know, some of them sharks from like the Sherman Emporium. I think that would be fun. And so yeah, that's all I have from that company. This one's a fairly new to me company, but if you guys have been watching my past videos, you'll be familiar with it. This is by Mystic Fabrics. And this is my beloved piece of Galaxy. Whoa. This is what I stitched my Zodiac um, Pisces on. This is mostly like a dark purple, but it's got this like Aurora Borealis kind of effect. And again, this is Mystic Fabrics uh, Galaxy. They have some fun fabrics. I need to buy some more of them, but basically I ordered this. Oh, look at that. Oh, that just makes me happy. <laughs> the colors, the texture. Oh. oh, I could just stare at this for hours. Like I wanna go swimming in that. <laughs> Like, oh, I was dying when I got this fabric. So like, I think I had ordered a fat quarter and it, well, as soon as I got it, I immediately messaged her and asked for a full yard. And she said, well, actually I still have the half yard and other quarter from the piece that I cut for you. If you want, I'll just send those to you. And at first I was kind of like, well, I kind of want a full yard just so I could like, cause I was considering doing maybe like a shad lane on this it's kind of wild for a chatelaine but you know i was kind of wanting to be wild i have another piece here same cut just different size i think this is the piece that i didn't use the cast off from uh pisces so i can do something smaller on that and then i put the quarter in with i believe with temptress of the cursed sea because i'm pretty sure i'm not using that fabric for her because i think she matches the colors too much and she just kind of blends in with the background but I still think she'd look cool enough that I haven't quite committed to stitching her on something else. So, but yeah, I, I would probably take more of this fabric, but again, I could pretty much just frame this fabric and stare at it, like not even stitch anything on it. Cause I did notice when I was stitching Pisces, I was having that like, oh, I'm covering up a really cool spot as I was stitching. So that was funny. These are the only pieces I have from that company, but because this is so cool, I will probably go shopping again. So, Mystic Fabrics. And again, I'm going to link all these down below. Um, okay, so this is a random, kind of, yeah, very random. Weeks Dye Works. I've had this forever, too. I think I bought it off eBay. And this is Lilac 30 Count. Don't have a lot of that, but it was just kind of a trusty purple color. It looks like I need to surge this, too. Dang, I missed this one probably because it was all folded up in the envelope still. But yeah, that's just Weeks Dye Works. Not a lot of modeling going on in them. It's mostly a solid, solid over dye, but it does have kind of a distressed look to it. So I think I was going to stitch um, Princess Eliana by Mirabila, the girl that's running in the super colorful dress. But then I got that weird piece of um, Da Vinci by Picture This Plus that was kind of more purple. So I ended up putting that aside for her instead of this. So... But yeah, that's the only piece of weak style work I got. Okay. I'm getting intimidated because I'm looking at my pile of from under the sea fabrics. It's pretty big. Uh, I love Leslie. She's so awesome. So yeah, this is uh, what I'm getting into here. I know it's big, but I love it. Oh. Okay, so let's get into it. <clears throat> okay, so this is my cast off piece of Hecate. And this is the other piece from the piece that I got for 
made into Bataha. So, and this piece is predominantly three colors, a very bright hot purple or hot pink, a amethyst purple and a vivid aquamarine turquoise color. I always have a hard time whether saying turquoise, aqua, because sometimes people think turquoise, they think sky instead of sea. This is definitely more of a sea, kind of a green. So maybe aqua is better than turquoise. We all have our preferences on how we pronounce colors. Now the thing that drives me crazy about buying over dyed fabrics is like, if I saw this piece, I'd be very unhappy. If I saw this piece, I'd be like, ooh, give me some of that. When really they're all one and the same. So it's kind of hard to pick and choose fabrics that way, but that's what you get when you like over dyed fabrics. It's kind of a, a dice roll. Okay, you will have seen a lot of these in my last video, but you're gonna have to look at it again, sorry. <laughs> So this is my piece of, I have two of them actually, of Fiery Skies. And I love Leslie at Under the Sea Fabric. She's so cool. She's so helpful too. Isn't that fun? It's a fun color. It's just really different for me. I don't have a lot of bright, like hot colors. I have mostly like cold colors because, you know, it matches my heart. <laughs> but so I've been trying to get a little bit more, you know, hot colors just for to mix things up a little bit. Okay, so that was one piece of fiery sky. I've got another one in there, but I didn't have them stored together just because that looked redundant. This is a hand painted fabric and this is uplifting currents and by hand painted it has kind of a distinct pattern. So it's got like a, a sploosh <laughs> looking, you know, tie dyed effect to it almost. These are all opalescent. Well, one thing I love about Under the Sea Fabrics is most of their stuff is pretty true to what I see on the website. And so far, the things that I've ordered from her, if I've ordered like the same colors, they look pretty much like the last piece I got. So that's nice. <laughs> this piece is April Showers. Very delicate, kind of Easter eggy colors again, but this is predominantly turquoise and it's just got a couple hits of Kind of a pinky purple kind of my wheelhouse i guess you'd say um more purple than pink though usually but yeah that's fun and how i've managed my collection so far is usually i'll have a piece that i'm looking for fabrics for and i'm like hmm, maybe this hmm, maybe this so i end up buying them <laughs> and then i do the fabric toss and decide which one i want this one is called Seaside. It's very similar to the piece I just showed you, only it's more earthy. Like it's got kind of more earthy blues and earthy greens versus like sea or sky, even though it's called Seaside. So a Seaside, I guess, is earth, you know? It's beachy, I guess. Yeah, see, it's got little, little bits of kind of a sandy color in it and it is very much getting washed out. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's very delicate. This would be good if you want like a background for either a mermaid or like a chatelaine or something, but you don't want it to be too busy because this is definitely a very soft, you know, flow of colors. The transitions are soft too. So this one's a very soft one. And again, that is Seaside Fabrics by Actually, this is a fabric by Stephanie. Holy shit, what am I doing? Let's see, okay. That's why my fabrics by Stephanie pile was so small. So, this last piece I showed you, Seaside and April Showers, those are fabrics by Stephanie. My bad, I am so sorry. I, I knew these piles were wrong. Oh, so let me do some sorting real quick. And we'll take a Under the Sea Fabrics intermission and finish fabrics by Stephanie. I am so sorry, you guys, I suck. Let's see here, okay, okay. At least I did my tags, you know. That definitely helps here. Okay, I think, I think we, okay, yeah. All right, we're back on track now. So, one more intermission, Fabrics by Stephanie. This is Kaleidoscope. So you guys, oh, hang on. Getting a warning that my battery's low. Gonna make that go away. Let's try and make it. <laughs> we're getting into the home stretch now because we're getting to some of the big piles. And once we hit my pile of Pictureless Plus, probably about half of it is Da Vinci. So, <laughs> okay, again, Kaleidoscope by Fabrics by Stephanie. This is the piece, not the piece, but the color that I'm using for my Rainforest Lace design. 
It's a predominantly green with hits of other rainbowy colors, which was exactly what I wanted for that piece. And Fabrics by Stephanie is where I got it. So that is Kaleidoscope. So yeah, what I like about Fabrics by Stephanie's is she can blend colors, like a lot of colors, but it doesn't get too muddy. I mean, maybe there's a few spots that are a little muddy, but for the most part, it still remains harmonious. I like when something's a predominant color, but you can kind of see like a little bit of other colors in the background. I think that's really cool. Okay, so let's put these in the Fabrics by Stephanie pile. I knew that pile was looking a little skinny. I just thought I was stitching on so many of them. Okay, so intermission for Fabrics by Stephanie is done. We're going back to Under the Sea Fabrics. <laughs> so this is Hamlet, and this is one of their main colors, and basically it's some gothic purples. So, yep, there's Hamlet. I love that. If you love dark gothic purples, then this color is for you. So, yep, there's that one. And this next piece, ooh, I really like this. This is a la, 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 whimsical winter. This is a half yard that I bought for a Chatelaine design but I'm kind of hemming and hawing on whether I use it or not because I'm kind of short fabric wise. And at first I was like, eh, big deal. It's just gonna be an inch, you know, but now I'm kind of like, well, I also use the scroll frames where you attach the Velcro and typically you have to cut that off. So that means I'm gonna be losing even more. I don't know. I do like this piece enough that maybe I'll order a whole yard. This is definitely getting washed out though. It just looks kind of gray. It's definitely a very kind of cool minty, Okay, it looks a little better back there. It's got like some minty blues, some grays. I mean, there are some grays in here. Um, some nice, oh gosh, like light cerulean blue, like kind of a cornflower blue almost. So, but yeah, one thing I really like too is the texture of the colors. I think that looks mighty nice. All right, get this piece put to bed. And here's kind of a repeat, Fiery Skies, just another piece. I won't unfold it because you guys have seen it already. Midnight Mermaid. This is a hand painted, but basically it's like an ombre. So it's light at the top and gets darker at the bottom. And this bottom looks kind of purple. Well, no, there we go. That, that looks really good right there. Like that's pretty much true to what I'm seeing there. But see, I love all the little like tendrils that are going up on this one. <laughs> Just make me giggle a little bit. I am considering this one for Triton, the um, Bella Filipina Merman, just because he's kind of cool and I kind of want to do him on something neat. Under the Sea Fabrics, Ursula. So this is another hand-painted fabric and this is yummy. <laughs> this is light purple, dark purple, and black, basically. Very cool. Got to show you both sides because the sides, you know, kind of depends when it's painted like that. One side's a little bit more bold of a pattern than the other. Love that piece. Here's another piece of Whimsical Winter. So this is the first piece that I got. And I will say this piece is a little bit more greeny greeny. But I really like it. I'm thinking a mermaid might do that. So let me just show you the, the hat. It's a half yard, not a full yard. So kind of a comparison from the same color from two separate orders. So you see, sisters, not twins. <laughs> but you can kind of, kind of get the gist of it. But I do like both of those though. All right, now we've got, I ordered another piece of Hakate just because I like it. I won't do the whole thing because I already showed you the one piece I had. This is a half yard of Enchanted Forest. Sorry about the sound effects that you guys got there. So this piece is very earthy looking. And I'm thinking this for the uh, Chatelaine Rainforest Quilt. I will need a bigger piece than this for that though. But I just really liked that. So I got it and it's kind of a hunter green. I mean, there is some kind of foresty vibe to it because there's a bit of brown in it as well. 
but some of the greens mixed with blue. So it kind of like could either be a forest or swampy water, you know, take your pick. All right. So this is the under the sea fabrics pile. Look at it. Oh. I will say that's another one of my favorite fabric places to order from that. And she gives me the hookup on the Bella Filipina designs and kits them up for me. So yeah, my PayPal remembers how many times I have sent money to uh, under the sea fabrics. Okay. So this one's kind of weird. This is a, um, eBay shop. She doesn't have like a fabric store or anything, but she used to post some things on like some of the Facebook groups, but mostly I get her stuff through, um, eBay. Her name's Oksana Lopatina, but lately her tags say crazy hamster. So I don't know, maybe she's just going to open a shop at some point. And these are kind of like the X2 designs. Like they are, what you see is what you get. This piece has already died. None of the fabrics have names, so you can't like order different things. She'll have this size piece and this is what you get basically. So this is some Monaco, 28 count Monaco. Kind of a very deep purple, but it's kind of a ready purple. So that's fun. Thinking a Halloween design for that. This is another 28 count Monaco. I get a lot of Monaco from her. I just kind of like her Monaco colors. Kind of a gothic greeny gray, which I thought was fun. I wish she would do more opalescence. I have nabbed a couple of opalescence from her, but it doesn't seem like it's her main thing. This is a piece of 32 count linen. This is a fat quarter. This piece I just thought looked nice and earthy. It's lots of greens and rusts. A couple forest designs might look good on that. I did pull a piece of fabric from this dyer for the Hummingbird Fairy by Bella Filipina. I'll have to show you that in my next floss tube. I'm working on getting the toss together. This is opalescent 36 count linen. Not a big fan of the tiny, you know, counts. I say tiny in that the stitches are tiny. The number goes higher though. Um, but I just really like this color and it was opalescent. So I was like, gimme. But this is kind of a nice, kind of sea, sea and sage green. This piece is cool. This is 36 count. And like, again, I'm not a huge fan of 36 count, but I was like dying for this color. It's like lavender and kind of a sagey green and little bits of yellow. I don't know. I just like, ooh, I was really liking it. This next piece is probably one of my favorite pieces of her. And I had it lined up for Queen Mermaid, but then I got my Banshee and it was opalescent. So it won. Look how yummy that is. Oh, that's um, aquas and purples and it's got some nice modeling, but it's also a 32 count. And so I was like, that's going to be crowded for beads. I will say the beads aren't necessarily too dense on the, the Queen Mermaid, but still factor it in. This is 32 count linen. This is another kind of uh, earthy looking piece. Kind of blues and greens. Kind of like earth from afar, if you will. This is kind of an Easter egg looking piece. This is a 36 count linen opal. Just thought it looked fun. I did really think Hummingbird Fairy was going to go on this one, but when I did the toss for the other one, it won. So again, you'll see that next floss tube. Uh, this piece is cool. This is a 32 count and I just kind of like how gothic it looks. I think this is perfect for like a Halloween design very mossy green kind of comes across looking brown which there is kind of you know like a purpley brown to it but it's very cool i like it okay that went quicker than i thought it was going to i'm eyeballing these pieces in front of me and i'm like where are they from i think okay so this uh these are bleh, this are i know english uh, this is Seraphim Fabrics. I have an order with them as well. I have not experimented with them much, but they have some colors that I really like. And one that I ordered, I'm curious. I ordered this piece from a D-Stash on Facebook. And this is called Minerva. Huh. Could you die? <laughs> it's basically purple and orange. Very Halloween-y. 
I'm dying for it though. Look at that. <laughs> so that's Minerva by Seraphim Fabrics. I will say the times that I have ordered from them, I usually get my order fairly quick. And I'm liking what I've been getting so far. So I'm going to try using them a little more. This piece is Serafina. This is a 28 count. I would actually like to order some more of this just because it's fun. That and I did a... Um, if you go to the fabric viewer, I'll put that in the description below as well. Basically, it's a website where you can overlay certain designs, not all, but like Mirabilia's, Chatelaine's, um, Bella Filipinas. You can basically overlay those designs and then they have several different fabric stores where you can use those as the background. So you can kind of get an idea of what things would look like. Just a rough idea, not like an exact representation, but it is a useful tool. But I did a toss on the viewer with this and a Chatelaine Mandala. And I was like, ooh, I like that. So I'm kind of considering getting a full yard of this so I can maybe stitch a Chatelaine on it. So, and this is again, um, Serafina. So this is kind of pinky purples, bluey purples, and a little bit of, can't tell if it's yellow or green. Kind of a greeny yellow so it's hard to tell kind of easter eggy colors but on the cool side for the most part then i've got sea spray i think i have a couple pieces of this so yeah let's do a side by side so here's the first piece of sea spray i got this is 28 count linen kind of reminds me of that piece from uh uh ship's manor that whisper Kind of a limey green and Caribbean blue. But this piece is opalescent. And then I got a bigger piece. And it wasn't quite the same. It had a little bit more brown in it. Which I'm usually not very happy when there's brownie looking stuff. Oh gosh. This is so hard. This piece is like, uh, is it a half yard? Yeah, it's a half yard. So here's this piece. And then see, this one's just a lot brighter. So, twins, not sisters. But I was kind of hoping for more, more of this. Is this the same type fabric, too? It's 28 count, too, so... Yep. I mean, linen usually dyes the same. It's if you go from linen to even weave. Generally, even weave, the dyes take a lot lighter. Uh, linen, though, it shouldn't really matter what the count is. It should still be, you know, the darker kind of side. Some fabric companies are nice and they'll post pictures of even weave linen, Ada, like you can kind of sort through them a little bit. Not all, but some. Okay, this next piece, I don't think they have it available on their website anymore. And I actually bought it in a D stash. And I think I ran to their website to like order more and was like, oh, they don't have any more. What a bummer. So this is called Harvest Bounty. Let me lay it out. Another kind of Halloween y fall color. So it's oranges, yellows, and purples. Just flip it over, give you guys an idea of what both sides look like. And this piece is opalescent. So I was super happy when I got this off a of D stash because, like, cause usually when I see people posting fabrics D stashing on Facebook, usually by the time I get there, someone's already claimed the fabrics that I like, and this one was still available. So I was like, yay. And then I go to the website and see it's not available anymore. And I was like, oh, thank God, you know, because. A lot of times if I see those D stashes, I just end up going shopping and buying my own. But in this case, I would have been super bummed because I can't buy this. So, sorry guys, if you're looking at it like I want to order that. I guess maybe that Minerva might be close. Um, this first color that I showed you. But um, I did just order some in that new order that I made. But I ordered an opalescent because this one's not opalescent. But I will say, looking at the cover photo, I wouldn't have necessarily gotten purple and brown. Or purple and orange I got it was more like I mean I guess I could you know like it was like purples but browns and reds and you know just darker looking you know so I mean they're they're kind kind of similar but this one's more purple and this one's more orange obviously so okay one last pile aside from let's super quick skim this random pile I have so basically this random pile is 
solid colors. So I have a little bit of like some greens, some gray, some raw opalescent, some off white, just basic linen, some opalescent white, some, gosh, this stuff is stiff. And I think I bought these, I was like, I need to stash up on fabric. So I bought these at like an LNS just to have for like little ornaments. They're teeny tiny little pieces. Some white opalescent, some white. This is a printed fabric. Interesting. I was just experimenting basically. Black. Um, this is, I think, a Weeks Dye Works. No, it's Witchel Perman. It's um, Copper Penny. Bought that from an LNS. And then a little plastic bag from Joann's. That's all the solid colors I have. And it'll probably stay that way unless I get some black because sometimes I do fancy stitching on black. I will say you can't really buy black opalescent um, unless it's been dyed. So at least that I've seen for the most part. Okay, trying to reorganize without making a mess. We're in the home stretch, guys. Stick with me. We're almost done. The last pile and the biggest one is, uh, let me get picture of this plus. I love picture of this plus, but they suck to order from. So most of my picture list plus has come from like one, two, three stitch or eBay. So, um, this, hang on. So here's my picture of this plus here's my Da Vinci from picture of this plus. Cause I like it so much. So uh, real quick, I'm not going to show you each and every one of these, but, um, just to give you a basic idea, where's a good piece. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, this one. So this is a piece of 32 count Belfast. Do you like my tags? I think they look cool. So this is, oops, look, I forgot to surge one. I think this is the piece I cut off from um, my fairy moon. So look at that, isn't that pretty? The thing I love about Picture This Plus is their modeling is like so yummy to me. So Da Vinci's kind of predominantly a bluey purple with little splooshes of orange here and there, which I think is cool. So I really love Da Vinci, but I did get a weird piece to it. Yes. So when I ordered, I ordered most of these from, um, one, two, three stitch, but then I ordered a larger piece from picture this plus that order took six months to arrive. <laughs> and when I got it, it was this. So just kind of comparison, look how much more purple this is. So yeah. Twins, not sisters, but I'm thinking more like cousins than sisters for this. So that was kind of a, you know, interesting situation. And then I accidentally ordered some uh, Lugana. So there's what the Lugana looks like. A lot lighter, obviously, and the modeling is more subtle. So, but that's all of my Da Vinci. Look at this piece. Isn't that piece pretty? Ooh. Gosh, it's still not coming across on camera, but I love it. It's so wonderful. It kind of looks like fun marble to me. Like if marble came in that color, oh, I'd be all over it. So then here's my piece of, gosh, we're losing the sun too. Um, crystal Heather. So crystal is what Picture This Plus calls any of their opalescence. And I think I ordered this right when I came back from stitching. I think I told you that in my last video. So it took a while to arrive even before the pandemic was a thing. This is Picture This Plus Legacy. Got it just because I needed some neutrals and I was shopping for some Teresa Wensler fabrics and I decided this one was too yellow, but I do use it for like ornaments and stuff. These I think were like remnants from LNS's and I think, I'm not sure, that's why I haven't tagged it. I think this is jazz. So jazz is like um, a blue, bluey green with streaks of purple. And I think, think, that's what this is. I haven't actually ordered a piece of jazz though to know for certain, but I'm pretty sure that's what this is. And they were just like little cuts that I bought from the LNS. This I believe is cauldron. Yeah. I think I got that on eBay. So fun for Halloween stuff. Very grays and rusts. Looks like a rusty boiler room. This is fawn in Belfast. Kind of a fun neutral. I'm trying to speed it up before my battery dies. <laughs> this is shale. I like this. Um, I think I ordered both these off eBay. And I like shale because it's kind of a purpley brown. Like it's a neutral, but it's 
got a hint of a color. See, this is one thing I love about Pictureless Plus is their modeling is so fun. Like even when it's just one color, it's so fun because there's so much stuff going on. I think this would be good for Chatelaine's too because it has a little bit of background noise, but it's not too crazy because it's all one color. Here's a piece of Pansy, just a nice purple color or violet, I think would be a more appropriate description. Ooh, I like this one. This is conifer. So this is a nice dark evergreen. I think some Christmas designs might be fun for that. Halloween would work too, though. This is gothic. And this one, I love the pictures of it on like um, Pictureless Plus's like website. But I have yet to get a piece that I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It's basically like a dark, almost black navy with streaks of like lighter blue and purple. But it's just, I mean, it looks pretty light here because you guys can see through it, but I mean, that still looks lighter. Like this light here is making it look more purple. It's definitely more of a dark blue, like almost black. This looks cooler than it should, but I can't resist a, a color named Gothic. Uh, let's see. This is some more conifer, a little smaller cut that I got of it. Um, let me just give you a side-by-side -side so you can kind of see where hues vary. Just a little bit on that one, not too bad. For the most part, it seems like Picture This Plus is solid colors, like just the one colors are pretty consistent. It's in like their mixes, like that example I showed you for Da Vinci where things get a little eh. This is Harold. Another nice, kind of a more bluey green than olive green. This is a weird, like, it's a color scape. Basically, it's like a picture of this plus, but it didn't dye right. Like, they were selling them on um, Etsy. So, it's kind of a flesh, creamy, peachy color. This is Lock. A bluer, kind of more blue, but a little bit of green to it. But I think, I think I'd file it under blue. This is another Lock. This is an opalescent Lock. So, you can see the side-by-sides there. This one kind of raised an eyebrow. This is confetti. It's a super tiny piece, eight by 12. I got it off one, two, three stitch. <laughs> Very bright yellow. When you look at the picture of it though, it looks like pastel blues, greens, like Easter eggs. And I guess I just got a piece that's predominantly yellow with a few random little bits of green. <laughs> so, hey, I bought a small piece so I could see what it was like. And now I know I don't want a bright yellow piece. <laughs> I didn't order a bigger one. This is Echo. This came from a bigger piece and I've just used so many pieces of it that this is all that's left. So good ornament size. Basically it's a black, but the opalescent in it is kind of green hued. So that makes it fun. This is Tidal. I love this one. Very delicate sea foamy green. Good for mermaids. Haven't found the perfect mermaid yet. It looks more washed out, but it is a very light, delicate color. Let's see if the white helps. Yeah. See, it's pretty delicate. Okay, this next one is Glacier. And I like this because it's kind of like Tidal, but it's just a stronger color. So yeah, that's Glacier. Picture this plus. Oh, I do have a piece of jazz. Look at that. <laughs> see, this is why I need to sort through my fabrics. And see, blue with little streaks of purple. I'm pretty sure those pieces are jazz too. This piece, I was like, whoa, when I got it. This is Crystal Calypso. Crystal as an opalescent. I was like, dang, that's bright. So yeah, it's like neon turquoise, if that's such a thing. Uh, this is Rosewood. I just ordered this for fun and I really like it. It's an interesting rosy brown color. I don't know, I'm usually not a pink person, but I like this, this shade because it's very vintagey. This piece is Carnival. It's kind of a warm color with some hints of blue. I think that's cool. Not my usual wheelhouse, but I do like it. I like it because it's different and it's fun. Fathom. I love this one because it's a very dark green. It looks brighter in this, but I, I assure you it's a little bit darker. So yeah, Fathom. Kind of a dark sea green like in the ocean where the light stops penetrating. Then this is a big piece of pansy, which is just basically purple. So, here we go. So 
So that's basically my fabric hoard. Minus the pieces that are kitted up and being considered for starts and minus the pieces that are on the way to me now, which I have three orders. Uh, one is from Seraphim, one is from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, and one is from an overseas company. So, and it's my first time ordering from them, so I have no idea how long it's going to take. But, um, yeah, I guess you guys can catch up on the floss tubes to see that. Um, I will link all of the places that I've ordered from down below if they are linkable and if they are still selling, like that one UK place, if they're not still selling, I'm not going to link them just because I don't want to get your hopes up for no reason. I mean, maybe I can link it so you guys can keep an eye on it or something. So we'll see with that. Um, I'm planning on some more future videos on like some over one stitching. Obviously I've got some whippy stuff going on over here. So that'll be updated in the next videos. But for the most part, I just wanted to show you guys the fabric cord. Um, if you want any like more in-depth fabric stuff, like if you're new to even weaves and linens, we can do, you know, something on that pros and cons of, you know, which fabrics to bead on and whatnot. Basically everything's personal preference, you know, stitch on what you want, what makes you happy. You know, there are no rules, you know, so just stitch what you have fun on because that's what this is supposed to be about. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.